and is all about how to graph inverse variations. We learned in the previous section that if we graph y equals 1 over x, we get a hyperbola. That's a graph that has two parts to it, and each part has asymptotes. What we'd like to do now is explore what factors move that graph up, down, left, right, and change the curvature of the two arms of the hyperbola. So first, let's look at what happens if we replace the number 1 in the equation above with some other number. We're going to compare y equals a over x to y equals 1 over x. We're going to replace 1 with some other number a. So first shown below is the graph y equals 1 over x. If a is greater than 1, the graph is a vertical stretch. It's as though we grabbed the top and the bottom of that graph and pulled it up and down. So an example, y equals 2 over x as compared to y equals 1 over x. 2 over x would be stretched up and stretched down. It's stretched in the vertical direction. So the red line below represents what y equals 2 over x would look like. Next, if we look at a that's between 0 and 1, that is a fraction, 0 0.5, 0 0.78, 0 0.0001, something that's between 0 and 1, then the graph is going to be a vertical shrink. So let's say that I asked you what is y equal, the graph of y equals 1 over 2x. Well, first it's helpful for you to think of this as y equals 1 half over x. These two expressions here, 1 over 2x and 1 half over x, are equivalent expressions. They're just the same thing written two different ways. So we can picture this as the a in the general form is 1 half. Again, if I compare to the graph of y equals 1 over x, I'll so see that y equals 1 half over x would be a vertical shrink. Now I know that the red, the red lines in this appear to actually cross the axis. That's simply a function of the way that these appear on the screen. In reality, these are still asymptotic. All right, so what I've shown below now in red there is what happens if a is negative. If a is negative, then the graph is flipped upside down. It's a reflection across the x-axis. So y equals negative 2 over x would be the flipped over version of y equals 2 over x. Making that a negative flips the graph upside down. Now let's look at what happens if we add a constant term after that inverse variation part. So if we have y equals 1 over x plus k, that plus k number. Adding that constant is going to shift the whole graph up or down. So if I have y equals 1 over x plus 3, that plus 3 is going to take the whole graph and shift it up 3 units. You can imagine that if y were if it were y equals 1 over x minus 3, then it would shift the whole graph down 3 units. So then the question is, how do we shift the graph left and right? Well, what we're going to do is y equals 1 over x minus h. And that minus h will tell us how much we shift the graph left or right. If h equals 2, the graph is going to, the graph is going to shift 2 units to the right. So if we graph the equation y equals 1 over x minus 2, I take the y equals 1 over x, and I shift it to the right two units. Watch your signs in this. Notice that the denominator is x minus 2. And it's tempting to think that because it's minus 2, that the graph is going to shift to the left, that is in the negative direction on the x-axis. But look back up at the general form. The general form here is y equals 1 over x minus h. It's minus a constant, and we want to know what is just the constant. In this case, the constant is 2. h is positive 2, so we're shifting the graph 2 units to the right. A good way to understand how a, h, and k affect functions is to go to the link below. Now I know that link looks really ugly, and the copy of that link is in Moodle. It's listed as 12.2 animations. 
It's through the classzone.com website that your textbook is registered to. What you can do there is change A, H, and K and see how they affect the shape of the graph.